Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and this is part nine of the ultimate smart home guide for 2020. So far we have discussed what is a smart home? What are the benefits of a smart home? What kind of smart home devices are there? How do we control these devices? Automations, connection protocols, ecosystems, hubs, and now we're here at networking and security. If you haven't seen those videos yet, there are links in the description below, or you can go to techtechandmoretech.com. If you have seen the videos and you found them helpful, consider hitting that like and subscribe button to work that YouTube algorithm. Having a strong and secure network is imperative to having a well-functioning smart home, and also just in general for all your devices to work properly. The top piece of advice with networking in general is wired when you can and wireless when you have to. Obviously, this isn't the end-all be-all of networking, but it is a very good rule to follow if possible. Many homes aren't wired with ethernet to all rooms, so I understand that most of the time you kind of have to settle for having everything wirelessly connected to your network. But when it comes to smart homes, there's definitely a lot you can do to minimize the amount of Wi-Fi devices that you have. 10 to 15 years ago, people only had maybe one or two devices per person on their home Wi-Fi network, but nowadays pretty much everything connects to Wi-Fi and that can mean that you might encounter different sort of sluggish performance issue or even just reachability and connection problems on an overloaded network. Now I mentioned in the previous video on connection types that I personally prefer to have at the least amount of Wi-Fi devices connected to my network as I can possibly have. I say this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the majority of people just use the wireless router that their internet provider gives you, like Comcast or whoever. And these, for the most part, are garbage. They most likely don't have a lot of the most recent features that good wireless routers have, such as Mebo 2x2 or Wi-Fi 6, and they're often not very customizable, which is definitely something that you want when you start getting you know, 30, 40, 50 different Wi-Fi devices connected to your network. By buying your own good modern router, A, you're gonna save some money because you're not gonna be paying Comcast a rental fee for the garbage they're giving you. And additionally, you can then customize how each device on your network sort of interacts with the rest of your network. When each of your devices is directly connected to Wi-Fi, it kind of poses a security risk because each of those outbound connections is a potential entry point for some sort of malicious intent. I don't say this to scare you into thinking that your home is gonna be hacked, but it is a valid concern. This is especially true if you keep all of your Wi-Fi devices on the same network. For example, keeping your personal computer on the same network as your Wi-Fi smart bulb. If you absolutely must have everything on a Wi-Fi connection, which is ultimately okay, make sure you have a good modern router and put all of your smart home devices on a separate network. Often this can just be a guest network, which will then isolate them from the rest of your main devices, which are gonna be like on your main network. Another thing to keep in mind with Wi-Fi is the size of your home. If you have a multi-level home, chances are one single router isn't gonna cover everything, but that's also gonna depend on the layout, the size, and the construction materials. So depending on all those different factors, you might wanna invest in a mesh Wi-Fi network, something like an Eero or like a Linksys Velop or anything like that that will then be able to basically cover all your home and make sure you don't have any dead spots in terms of signal and coverage. The alternative route, which I've sort of alluded to before, is having Zigbee or Z-Wave devices as the main sort of connections for all your smart home devices. These by design create their own mesh network, which will then connect to a centralized hub, which you can have connected wired to your router for a more sort of secure network altogether. Minimizing the amount of Wi-Fi devices you have also means that there's less sort of upkeep and less devices you have to keep an eye on that might be sending out data to places that they shouldn't be. This is especially true of super cheap, no-name Wi-Fi lights or smart plugs they might get on Amazon for a few dollars. In either case, I would advocate for buying a good wireless router because you can then view and see kind of what is going on with your network. If you have any issues, it's much easier to sort of pinpoint them and then troubleshoot and fix them. Security is often the most neglected part of a smart home because it's kind of the most confusing and is ultimately seen as not quite as important. Good modern routers already often have good security sort of already built in, but it doesn't hurt to have that extra layer of security by segregating networks. Most routers at least have the option of creating a guest network, which is a separate network, which then basically just gives those devices basic privileges to your internet con connection, but doesn't really let them communicate with your main network. 
Your primary network will have all the devices connected that might have personal information on them, like your computer, your phone, your iPad. And then your smart Wi-Fi bulbs and your TV and your Xbox can all be on the guest network because we really don't need that to ever interact with like our phones or our computers. Now, if you want more detail on networking and security in general, there's some links in the description below that kind of go into the more technical aspects of things. I'm admittedly not an expert of it, but these are just things that I've sort of just learned over the years of having a smart home and kind of being conscious of security in general. For those of you that have HomeKit homes, you can get a HomeKit router, which makes it really, really easy to then control exactly which HomeKit device can do what on your network. And you can choose between you know, full internet access, limited network access, and then basically no internet access at all. There are only a couple of routers that support this at the moment, but I imagine as smart homes get more and more popular, more devices are gonna have these sort of smart home specific options in their settings so that people are more comfortable you know, buying all these different devices that can control their home. So to quickly summarize the networking and security side of things, have a wired connection when possible, meaning it's connected to your router. Have a wireless connection when it's necessary. Having a wired hub with a Z-Wave or Zigbee devices is preferable than having all Wi-Fi devices. And lastly, invest in a good wireless router that has lots of different security features and customization options. If you follow those sort of four points when building out a smart home, you should be able to maximize the performance, reliability, and security of your home network. This was the last full section of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide for 2020. Basically, the next part is just gonna be sort of conclusion and key takeaways from each part. For anyone that has watched all nine parts, I really thank you and I hope that you have learned a lot about smart homes and you have a very good idea sort of going forward as to what you wanna buy and how you wanna set things up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer as many sort of smart home questions as I can. My question for you guys is what kind of router and network do you guys have set up? Have you taken security measures in place and what are they? I would love to know. If you liked the video so far, hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more content to come. And until next time, see ya.